Hey there, third grade, this is Mr. Campbell. We're gonna get started today on page 229, uh, and this is gonna be uh, lesson 6.6, .6, apply properties, areas of irregular shapes. And at the end of today, we want you to be able to say, I can uh, use properties to find the area of irregular shapes by breaking the shape into smaller parts. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at what this means. We're gonna do our solve and share here on page 229. So if you're not there, pause the video because we're gonna read this question and then we're gonna work on it here. It says, Mrs. Markham's desk is shaped like the picture below. The length of each side is shown in feet. Find the area of Mrs. Markham's desk. All right, so we're gonna slide down here and see here is the picture of the desk we're trying to figure out. All right. So uh, I see that I've got kind of a L shape here and there's no square units inside of it. So how on earth am I going to try to figure this out? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line right up here because this is where I can break my shape into two smaller rectangles and then add them up. And remember, that's what we were doing Yesterday in our last lesson, we were taking a rectangle and breaking it into smaller pieces. Now, this is not a solid rectangle, but I do still have two rectangles here. And so I can still do this type of a problem. Well, now that I've got this, uh, I need to figure out which numbers I need to use, right? Well, before, when we were doing our different types of rectangles, uh, I would need to have the base, like the bottom, times the height. And that would be the part that's going up and down. Well, I've got seven feet all the way across here, but I'm missing a chunk here, right? So instead, what can I do? Well, I can do this rectangle right here, and then I can do just this rectangle right here. So I'm not gonna worry about this seven feet for right now, and I'm not gonna worry about this three feet for right now. I'm just gonna use my base and my height. So here I've got three times six is gonna be the first part that I need to know. So six feet times three feet. And then over here, like I said, I've got my bases here and that's four feet. And I want to times that by the height over here, which is three feet. So four times three. All right. Well, six times three, hmm, six, 12, 18. But I have units here, right? What are my units? It's feet. And these are going to be square feet because it's the area inside. So square feet. Then this box over here, this rectangle is four times three, four, eight, 12. And same with this, I see they are still feet. So 12 square feet, but I'm not done yet, am I? 12 square feet. I'm not done because now I need to know what all of it is together. So I need to add my 12 and my 18. So 18 plus 12, hmm. 8 plus 2 is 10, so I'm going to regroup my plus 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. <gasps> there it is. So it's going to be 30 square feet all together. All right? 30 square feet. This is like yesterday. There's a lot of steps and a lot of things going on here, but it's kind of like a puzzle. And sometimes it's fun to work through these puzzles and work and go, hey, it's kind of hard, but there's some fun in getting to solve all the different steps. And I bet that if you've been following along and practicing each day, this is going to make some sense to you. And I hope you find it a little bit fun, just like I do as well. Let's go ahead and turn to the next page. So we're going to go to page 230 right now. Here we are on page 230. And just like the other page, we've got an irregular shape. And that just means it's not a rectangle. It's not a square. It's kind of this U shape this time around all right so we've got this u-shape thing going on we got to figure out what's happening here it says mr fox is covering a miniature golf course putting green with artificial grass each artificial grass is one square foot what is the area of the putting green that mr fox needs to cover so we're talking area is going to be the inside of this shape and it says look for relationships think about smaller shapes that are part of larger shape all right. So we've got a lot of different numbers going on here and we got to determine, well, what of those are we going to use to help us out? So let's take a look at letter B. All right. So letter B says you can draw the figure on grid paper and then count the units to, to find it out. So here 
uh, we would look back up here and say, all right, so we need to be three across and then four down and then two over uh, and then four up because it's the same here and then three across. And that's exactly what they did. They took their grid paper. Uh, they drew three across and then went four down and then two over and then four up, three over, eight down, eight across, and then eight back up. That's a, a way to do it for sure. But you might be looking at that and going like, whew, that is a lot of counting here, isn't it? Yeah, so what's another way? All right, that's definitely a way you can do it. It's nothing wrong with that. But let's try another way. Another way would be to break it into some smaller pieces. So they drew a line across here, and they drew a line across here. We already knew that this is three feet, two feet, three feet, right? We know that this is four feet and four feet. We know that this whole side is eight, and we know that down here is eight. Well, how are we going to find these different rectangles? Well, rectangle A, they said is going to be four, because that's the height, times three is the base, and that's 12. Rectangle B is four is the height, and three is the base. So four times three is 12. Now, down here is where it gets a little bit tricky. I can't just use eight feet here, can I? No. Because eight feet is all the way, and I just want to look at uh, rectangle C, which is this part. Well, over here, it tells me that this part is four feet. And if this whole thing is eight feet, four plus how many more will get me to eight? Four plus four, which is why they said four times eight. Okay, so I know that this whole side was eight. I know that this is the same length over here, which is why I got that four. And then I could say four plus what would equal the eight of the whole side, and that was also four. Well, when we do four times eight, it's 32. We can add these together. 12 plus 12 is 24. 24 plus 32 equals 56. So it's 56, and they did not forget square feet, because just like we saw over here, these are little squares, and they're all one-foot cubes. So that's why we've got square feet. All right, let's take a look on page 231 and check this out a little bit more. All right, on page 231, we're going to take a look at number three, all right? And again, just like I tell you every time, please make sure you are writing down what I'm writing on my paper. I'm only using a pen so that it stands out a little bit more and you can see it a little bit more clearly. But I want you to be using a pencil and following along. Now, for all of these different ones, if you've got grid paper and you want to go ahead and use it, you absolutely can do that. But we can also just break these into some smaller rectangles to be able to use them. So just like this, uh, this one looks similar to the one on our first page, but it just turned a little bit. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go across here. I don't want to break it right here. All right. So I've got rectangle A and I've got rectangle B. All right. Well, rectangle B is already set up for me. I've got five across and two going up. And so I know I need to multiply five times two. Here's where it gets a little trickier. Over here, I only have this whole side over here. So how do I figure out what is just right there? Well, I see over here I've got two, which means this is also two. These are the same length on either side. And so now I can say, well, this whole side here is five. So I can break it apart and say two plus what will get me to five? Well, two plus three, which means that my sides are now three. So that I need to do two times three. All right, we got that because all of it needed to equal the five and we already had our two. So the bit of the puzzle we needed was right there. Two plus three equals five. So I know those are three. Well, two times three is... I hope you said six. <laughs> Five times two. I hope you said 10. And now we can add these two rectangles together to find out 16. But I'm not done. What's my unit? Yeah, it's going to be inches, right? But not just inches. It's going to be squared. And I'm going to put SQ for squared. All right, squared and then IN. All right. And I do put a little period next to it so that that way anybody who's looking at this knows that that's an abbreviation. All right. Let's go ahead and come down here to number four. Now, number four, I'm going to help you get set up, and then I want you to do our equations on your own, all right? So here we go. So uh, in this one, 
Uh, let's go ahead and we are going to cut it right across here. All right. So we see we've got three right there, which means what's on this side. It's also going to be a three, right? I know that this whole side is going to equal nine. And I've got six going across here. So just like up here, I need to say three plus how much more will equal nine? Three plus, hmm. Oh, I know that one. It's six. Three plus six equals nine. Now that I've got those, I can write my equations and multiply. So will you go ahead, pause your video, and try that out right now, and then see if you were able to get this one on your own. All right, I hope you paused your video. I hope you solved the rest of this by writing it. If not, pause it now. We're going to go ahead and say uh, my base here is four, and then my height is three. So four times three. That's going to give me this rectangle right here. Over here, I've got six as my base, and then it's six tall. So six times six. All right. So far, are you with me? I hope that's what you've got so far. Four times three is 12, and six times six is 36. And now I need to add these together. Well, two plus six is eight. Ooh, sorry. That was a bad eight. And then one plus three is four. All right, so 48, but I'm not done. What is my unit? 48, and I've got centimeters, but I'm doing area inside, which means that these are going to be square centimeters. All right, square centimeters. All right, 48. So hope you were able to solve that with me. Uh, let's go ahead and jump down here. Uh, we're going to try out right now number six and number eight. All right, now these two are a little trickier. So uh, let's start with number six. All right, I'm going to circle that, and I want you to try it out on your own. We're going to start right here. They've already told me this part is going to be one centimeter. All right, can you solve number six? Pause your video and try it out right now on your own. All right, I hope you paused the video and that you were able to say, okay, I've got this. I can figure this out. All right, so uh, up here we've got one and one. So we're going to do one times one uh, will give us that first square right up there. And then I don't really have to do anything extra because I've got three times five. Those are my two other sides. One times one is one. Three times five is 15. And now I can add these together. And that gives me 16. But what's my unit? Yeah, it's going to be square centimeters all right square centimeters all right go ahead and try out number eight on your own you're gonna cut it right here all right you're gonna cut it right there and see if you can solve this one now all by yourself go ahead i hope you pause the video uh, we're gonna go ahead and solve this one now if you haven't done it pause now and try it out all right my base up here is five my height is four, so five times four. My height is four, and my base is one. Five times four is 20. Four times one is four. 20 plus four equals 24. I'm not done yet. So if I've got 24, what is my unit? Well, I had centimeters, but I'm doing area, which is inside. So I need square centimeters. All right, square centimeters. All right, let's come on over here next. Uh, I want you to try out number five on your own. Number five is a little bit tricky, but I bet you can do it. All right, try number five right now. I hope you pause the video to try out number five all on your own. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... I'm going to cut the top right there. All right. So I cut the top right there. I see this whole side here is three centimeters. The whole side here is three centimeters. And so if that whole part is three, all right, if that's all three, and here I've got two, which means over here is also two. I'm going to cross this off just so it doesn't confuse us. All right. So this part's two. Two plus what will equal three? Well, two plus one. And when I do that, I go, oh, now this makes a lot more sense. One and one. So one times one. And then here I've got four as my base. 
and 2 as my height, so I'm going to multiply those together. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9, but I'm not done. Ooh, it's square centimeters again. It's going to be area, so it's squared, and centimeters were mine. Now, I wanted to save number 7 last, and here's why. This one has three different parts. It has three different parts because we are going to go ahead and draw our line right here and right here. Now, if you're feeling brave and you want to try this on your own and you think you can solve this puzzle, hey, I want to encourage you to try that out. But if you're like, yeah, I want to try to work through it with you, that's okay too. If you're doing it on your own, pause, solve it, and then we'll be able to check it together. And if you're working with me, then just stick with me right here. All right. So for this one, I can see that I've got a box here of 1 times 1. And then I can see I've got a box here of 1 times 1. Which leaves me this big box right here. I can see my height here, they've already told me, is going to be 2. But when I go to here, if I just go to this 4, I'm missing all of this part right here, aren't I? I sure am. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to figure out how much more is right here because I don't want to stop there. I want to know what is this whole part here. All right, this whole part. And here I've got four. And then how much is, oh, I see up here is one, which means down here is one. So what's four plus one? This whole long side here is going to be five. So if my, two is my height, five is my length of my whole big side. And now I can multiply. One times one is one. One times one is one. Two times five is 10. I can add these together, right? One plus one plus zero is two. Nothing plus one is one. So I have 12, but what's my unit? Well, I was figuring out the area of the inside, so that tells me it's gonna be square. And what's my unit? Inches, square inches. All right, this is it. I hope you guys were able to follow along with me. We're just breaking these into some smaller pieces and solving the puzzles that are these different parts. I hope you guys have been working with me, that you've been figuring out, and that you're feeling confident because I bet you are doing awesome at this if you've been paying attention and practicing with me. Well, thanks so much for working hard with me today. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you next time.